Scott. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday, December 18th, 2022. Mm. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Doubter 5. And mm. as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, I Wombat. Wanna, I want to be DJ Wombat. Like, how, what are we doing throwing in DJs now? This is this is new. <laughs> this is a new iteration after 10 years of doing the radio with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, um, when I talk to other DJs and they're they're introducing themselves in our meetings, they always put DJ in front of it. So I thought okay, it was okay, time. okay. I've been to a couple but, of those meetings, so that is true. That is true. Yeah. I don't know why we. Have you can put DJ that. in front of one, but that's fine. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, our guests today are Dread Pirate Higgs. Welcome from Western Canada, Arr. and the John Richards all the way from England. Welcome. Hello. Yes, I want to. I want to uh, MBE after my name. Don't What's we that all? stand for? <laughs> Help me. I'm well, MBE. MBE? Help me. What's that stand for? Member of the British Empire. Ah. A, knight, a knighthood. Okay. okay. Uh, Digital Free Thought is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. The Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. And we'll tell you more about them after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around for that. Oh my um, but what's our topic today? My mind is blown. I had no idea that MBE existed. I'm on Google looking for OBEs, MBEs, and CBEs. This is a whole new rabbit hole for me. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But speaking of things that have confounded me, I want to talk about inverting the problems, a lot of the problems that come with Christianity. And if we just flip them on our head, we might find some really interesting solutions. We'll talk about homosexuality. Christianity has problems. I know, but if you turn them around <laughs> and don't make them your problems, all of a sudden everything's solved, and it's done in like the most straightforward fashion. Well, it's do gonna tell. Be, it's going to be an interesting show. But before we get into it, how about we throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation? Okay. All right. Our newly Lord, who art in a colander, I'll Dante be thy noodles, thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever and ever. Amen. You know, I was telling Dredd about this. I wear a flying spaghetti monster hat. Just has the logo whenever I go out and play disc golf, and I play disc golf regularly, even in this cold. And I have been kicking butt. And people are like, Ty is the guy who hits really long putts, who who only throws two discs and ends up beating everybody else on the card. Like I'm having like a great time out each time. And the reason my my secret to success is that I can see the noodles. When I look at my lines, mm-hmm. I just see the noodle wrapping around everything. And I'm like, that's the line I'm going to take. The straightest path between two points in reality is a noodle. Has anyone ever considered that? <laughs> that is absolutely right. It's and the, absolutely don't forget right. the noodle theory. <laughs> yeah. It's and string as long theory, as do, really. As long, and you know what? The cool thing is, is like lines don't have endpoints. They just keep going. But noodles have a beginning and an end. So as long as you just yeah. stay on your noodle and land at that point of where your noodle needs to end, you will have a very consistent line of each shot. You have your very good birdie route. And I'm very, very happy and thankful that I have uh, uh, a flying monster noodly lord is behind back. you exactly yes, yeah. guiding each one of my throws in and it's just like oh that's so good and ty's like everyone's just like ty's weeding us so well anyway and, and that is really what you need a god for right all <laughs> right? Well, right right that, right that, that and me. finding parking spaces <laughs> yeah and keys car, car keys and car keys and car keys, and car which, keys. Is a, yeah, yeah. which is a shame side story well i have my uh i have a little clip that keeps my keys next to my pants and so I always lose my keys, which also means I always lose my pants. And there was a movie that was, that was the Lego movie that had a song called Where Are My Pants? And that's the only song in my head that goes on every morning. It's like, where's my pants? I need to find my keys. My wallet's in there, too. Where is everything? Dread Pirate, how have you been? I'm doing doing pretty good. I've been working, uh, and that's why I've been absent the last couple of uh, times here. But um, I'm going to I'm, I'm wearily we're, we're on a break. 
what are the th- what are the crazy jobs this time? It's like fireman, private detective, security guard, cougar fighter backer. What, like what, what's going on now? Well, so yeah, doing security for this uh, show uh, called cool. Fire Country, which is uh, wildfire fighters, wildland oh, awesome. fighters. It's set in California, but of course it's shot here in BC. So sure. But uh, yeah, no, it's kind of uh, becoming a regular show for me. So that's good. Cool. I'm getting closer to membership. Dread your adult life is cooler than what I would suspect most kids in California's teenage life is. Just like I wish all this were going on 30 years ago. I have a lot more ahead of me. (laughs) Awesome. Uh John Rich is checking in with you too. Uh Master of Chaos. And how far away are you actually from a uh British Empire membership? Because I would imagine if the Empire went to war, you would be a part of it. So, like, how are you not part of that system already? Well, I don't have any much to do with the war. Well, okay. Well, the Empire would be like, hey, citizens. I mean, the Beatles, go the Beatles are guys. bees. <laughs> oh, the yeah. Beatles. Are... I, actually, yeah. they're, they're sirs now. They've gone up one. Mm. But I, I really can't take part in this conversation because my mind is still boggling about the problem that Ty's been having with his pants. Ah. You've, you've got to realize that <laughs> they're underwear. No, the oh, trousers. Uh, the trousers. <laughs> trousers or pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. trousers. Yeah, well, that's, that's different. That's very different. <laughs> I've been trying to picture you sticking your keys in your pants. I mean, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. That's a good one. Uh, Larry, how have you been? What's going on with you? Before oh, we get I've been fine. It? I've I've had a call this week. Oh. And uh, not real good that I gave it to Sheila, so she's got it now too. So it's not been a great week, uh, and I haven't, I haven't missed any work. So work again, having the cold is not real good. No, that's a bad but, combination. Yeah, but it's better than the other. I did take a COVID test, and I was negative, so that's all good. Good, you know that's it's a it's a good reflex. I went to a couple of parties with friends, and and one of them did have a cold, and I was making sure like you know I'm still separated, but like. Yeah. While we are so concerned about COVID still, like flu's out there, cold's out there, and a number of other diseases too. So still take yeah. care of yourself. It was real nice going two whole years without a cold. Yeah, it was. It was. I'm still going to make so careful. I got yeah, I I've still been face masks. Go for it. Yeah, I haven't had anything uh since at least 2018. Hmm. You know, wow. there's a cold or flu or anything. So mm-hmm. yeah. Not only that, but I'm all up on my vaccinations. I used to be afraid of vaccinations because they made me sick, but now I'm just like, keep vaccinating me. And like, yeah. my body just takes it. It's just like, you're good. Walk out. Not even yeah. like a sore yeah. arm ish. It just like goes away in a couple of hours. Anyway, we're going to get into uh, speaking of things that are inconvenient that you have to do anyway. Iran has this thing called hijab, which is not just in Iran, but it's in all over the Islamic mindset around the world. But I saw a really interesting movie made by other Iranians called Man Events Brilliant Device to, to Protect Himself from Lusting Over Women. That's not a job that women have to wear, but is in fact just a blindfold. And it's filmed as like a, a whole documentary series, but it's actually really done in a, in a, in a, uh, uh, both a commentary appropriate, but also a funny way. Because Tongue in cheek. It's tongue in cheek, but it's made by Iranians. It's filmed in Iran. It's done in mosque. And it's like a guy's having an argument with his wife saying, listen, you got to cover up your head. And the wife's like, I don't even want to wear this. Like, what's going on here? It's like, you should just close your eyes. It's like, I'm not going to close my eyes. How can I do this? Like, well, if I got a veil, you should veil. I'm just like, there's no way Uh veiling my eyes is going to stop. Oh my gosh, this might work. This might work. (laughs) And so like, he's sitting in his chair being like, wait a second, I can't see any women. I got to tell my friends about this. He goes to the mosque. (laughs) His mouth are like, why are you guys wearing an, an, uh, a mask? Like, you're standing where the women sit. You need to stand where the men sit. It's like, guys, I can't even tell. I can't even see. It's like, you got to put this on. He puts them on. This guy's like, oh, my gosh, Saeed, you have a brilliant idea. <laughs> they take it up to the boss. The boss is doing like a cut interview. He's like, yeah, I always had this idea. I thought this would have worked. This is pretty good. And next thing you know, all society begins to transition from women veiling <laughs> themselves so that men don't get aroused when they look at their hair to <laughs> men just covering up their eyes and not seeing the women in the first place. And it sort of restacks society by yeah. inverting the problem. What's up, John Richards? I saw you had a comment. Well, how did he get to the mosque? 
<laughs> if you do it three times a day i'm pretty sure you can like get there it's, it's muscle memory. memory yeah 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 like i could probably yeah. commute to work blindfolded at this point but here so, here. so i've got a high tech version of this mm. you know these you know these video filters mm. yes which can make you turn you into a rabbit Right. Yes, screen. yes, yes. To well, turn pair of glasses. <laughs> right, right. Pair, pair of glasses, which do that to women, so they're all bald. Ah, so listen, that's exactly ah, what I want yeah, to talk yeah. about today. Because <laughs> if we just say, if we take the text from the holy book and say, or any or any edict, and say women need to cover their head because men are lustful. Or if we say homosexuality is a sin, or you can't have an abortion based on whatever religious reason, if we just looked at what the core problem was, and instead of having the innocent people come up with a solution, just make the people who have a problem with it change a standard or change a process, if we invert the problem, we could come up with a brilliant solution. In the same way that you have to wear a hijab, just cover up the men's eyes or tell the men, hey, look away so you don't have to, to get aroused then, basically. You don't have to have women covering up their heads. You can have a much simpler, straightforward solution yeah, if you yeah, just yeah, invert yeah, the problem. Yeah. We can yeah. use technology to help us out with that too. John Richards. Well, there's an, another possibility, isn't there? You could have rules that mean men can only go out during the day and women can only go out during the night. I mean, yeah, this curfews. Is, yeah, this is the diurnal separation mechanism that enables some species to specify, you know? Right, mm -hmm. right. So like... Punjab, for example, is an area in India that says, hey, you can't cut your hair. You can't, or if you're if you're Sikh, you're supposed to leave your hair keep growing out because that's the way God intended it for it to look. And so you have men with very large beards, regardless of how inconvenient it is when you like drink soup or eat milk or whatever like that, a really, really long beard gets in the way. And then you have to have the turban to help hold all that hair in place. But mm. as John Richards was saying, what if you just invert the problem just like oh well what if we had filters where it's like when you look at people and you want to have a beard you can just have the beard and then if you want to take off the beard you could just take off the beard with like a click of the button that Excellent. works out so I well we done. can have stuff like that <laughs> yeah maybe maybe the answer is uh, using uh smart goggles like you know uh, yeah augmented well, I, yeah reality. like i was talking about and you can uh, dial in the the level of uh yeah the beard you want. that you want yeah, how holy prudence. do you want to look today? Uh, I want to yeah. be very holy. Yeah, okay, we'll get that long extended filter. We could get there right. with technology or just yeah. through some simple practices. So what I wanted to bring up today was some examples of problems and then methods that we can do to probably invert those problems so we won't have to deal with them anymore. Uh, mm. I, I'd like to begin first with the issue of blasphemy. Are you guys familiar with blasphemy? Do I have to introduce that uh, to us uh, of atheists? Are you kidding? We're all blasphemers. We know <laughs> Larry, for our audience, since we've never had this conversation, or since we haven't recently had the conversation of blasphemy, would you mind talking about what blasphemy is and why it makes God so angry? Well, it depends on uh, who you're talking to, I guess. It, does. it doesn't make God angry. Gods don't exist. <laughs> but it makes the people who worship That's God blasphemy! Angry. <laughs> <laughs> but, see what I mean? <laughs> it's uh, It's talk that goes against the spiritual teachings or the, of the religion that you're blaspheming against okay like in, in um in the what the ten commandments this is one of the first rules you know don't create uh, go, graven images right? right well if you go out and create graven images you're cre you're creating a blasphemous image uh, if you know going against the teachings of the religion mm. Mm. Yeah. why is that harmful yeah, yeah. Why, why, why are they such snowflakes? Eh? Right, I mean, right, right. That's the like, you know, problem. Yeah. yeah. In, in Pastafarianism, we do have one one act of blasphemy. Okay. And that's using ketchup on noodles. <laughs> <laughs> just it just doesn't work. Sorry, guys. Uh, Is that not worse than putting that's... pineapple on pizza? No, pineapple uh, no, on pizza we makes actually sense. Sanctioned. I don't know that's why people okay. don't like that. Yeah, that's okay. I'm a supporter yeah. of pineapple on pizza. I mean, there's already tomatoes on the pizza. There's already fruit. That's, that's how we brought pizza. the Hawaiians into the fold. That's just all I'm saying. But John Richards, what is what does God have against blasphemy? I'd love to understand this problem a bit more better. Like if I say, God damn it, or if I I think I can say that on the radio. If I said something that God didn't like, why why does God care? 
Well, you've, you've got me beat. I mean, most of us can take a few little insults without it damaging our ego too much. Mm. This guy just seems to be so tender. Mm. He's a yeah. snowflake. Mm -hmm. right. Toughen up, God, toughen right. up. So we do know we have a very sensitive God right or at least the Ooh. judaic version of god the character is very very sensitive don't worship anyone else before me i want to be your number one you gotta yeah. love me you gotta worship me you gotta worship my kid too who's also me don't worship yeah. my kid more than me uh -huh. i'm the number one guy and don't make fun of me either i hate that when you do that i really really don't like it it's like a 30 year old a three-year-old at like a playground being like i make the rules this is my slide don't take yes. me off the slide it's like stop it's it or i'll take my ball and go home exactly right. yeah so how do that we would, that would be very serious because they're playing at the world cup final at the moment we need that ball <laughs> <laughs> very true it's my ball and i want to go home so we have don't blaspheme god because it's offensive it offends god it offends his religion it offends his uh workers it offends everybody don't blaspheme God. What if we just inverted the problem where it's not our problem to not blaspheme God, but it's just God who won't take it personally anymore? Like when you consider the problem, if you consider it, it's a ultra super powerful, all knowing, powerful being being angry that ants are are mocking him. And he's just like, you know what? I don't care about the opinion of ants. Maybe they don't like me very much. Yeah. It's all good. I'll still reward the good ones, punish the bad ones. I'm a god. I got other things to do. I'm not. I'm. I don't mind. What do you think, Dred? I, well, I was going to say, you know, it's not like. I mean, how many times have you heard on the news that somebody got struck by lightning after blaspheming? Right. Because it just doesn't happen. Right. So it's not God that's getting mad. It's all his guys, all right? His grunts, right? Yeah, right. it's just like don't make fun of my dad. Don't make fun of my yeah. dad. It's like, hey, you know yeah, what? Yeah. Why don't you just calm down? Your dad doesn't yeah, even yeah. care. <laughs> or yeah, yeah that's a good one my, only be as offended got... as your god is right <laughs> exactly my mother got struck by lightning she was on the phone back in the days of corded phones you know and oh, the house across the road got struck by lightning and some of the charge came through to her and she had to let go and drop it quickly but wow. we don't know what word she last said <laughs> <laughs> So I like the idea. I, I'm sorry that happened to your mom, by the way. That's that sounds frightening. Was, that sounds really she was frightening. fine. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. She was she was an atheist though, too, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, okay. Just a wake up call. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But uh <laughs> the idea is we have a God who apparently doesn't care or immediately punish people who blaspheme, but we have his grunts who do. So what if the rule was just only be as offended as your God is on any matter? And mm. if you follow that practice and he's mm. like, hey, I'm going to get gay married today. It's like, uh, what's God doing about that? Nothing. OK, we won't do anything. Either. Exactly. exactly. Have fun, guys. I'm like, That's oh, right. well, this solves a lot of things. I'm only ever going to be yeah. as offended as yeah. God is about anything based yeah, on yeah. evidentiary well, experience. This is this is a case for fact checking, isn't Ooh. it? Because when when the priests or pastors or whoever agents of God claim that god is their god is being blasphemed we could demand to know how they know that yes exactly and you know uh -huh. the weird, what's your the, source yeah the, yes. the, yes. there, there's another weird arm to this too because even just in america at least mentioning that you're an atheist can offend people you know right, right? but it's mm -hmm. like your god isn't offended or demonstrably is not offended observationally isn't offended what too he made me <laughs> and three why are you being offended of the fact that i don't believe in yeah. your god you should only ever be as offended as your god is and as far as we can tell god doesn't care so why do you care like what's yeah. the, what's the real question there it's taking vicarious offense you're mm. taking vicarious offense unnecessarily that's the yeah, sin yeah. that we need to address vicarious that's offense yeah that's, that's a good one <laughs> yeah thanks thanks for that uh, dread because yeah. what you, you never know i mean whatever next it could be, it could develop to a state where one person can absolve the entire world of all their sins by dying. Right. That's what an right. idea. <laughs> okay, I yeah. love this. I want to I wanna tackle one more before we get to the top or the bottom of the hour. Uh, this one is, all right, so it's a complicated one because it's multifaceted and it's one that we're all familiar with. But Bible says, do not fornicate. But also, the Bible says, don't commit adultery, 
don't commit lust, don't uh, feed or commit prostitution, and another a number of other sexually mandated rules that keeps yeah. us uh, in in my position, even as an asexual, in a very frustrated point of view, particularly given that you biologically have urges or or dispositions on on certain things if you can't that he gave us that he gave us and gave us access to and and (laughs) and immediately gave us like hormones to make it very pleasurable if you do play with things but you can't because you can only have sex with one person you can't have lust you can't have prostitution you can't commit adultery it's a sin to even covet thy neighbor's wife it's one of the big it's one of the big 10 we can't have that what if we transition that or if we thought about the problem, why is there so many sexual uh, based um, uh, rules it's, in the Bible? Yeah, yeah. Dread, I'd love to hear that. What do you think? Why are there so many sexual based rules and why is fornication one of them? Well, because it's the thing we think about most. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the one that's like, what do you call it? The most ubiquitous? Well, you know, and if, if you pay any attention to Rick, Richard Dawkins, okay. he would say the whole mandate really of why we're humans is just to forward our genes it's really got nothing to do with anything other than that and since uh we forward our genes into the future through sex that is the most that is the priority for life the prime directive the prime prime directive yeah i love it interesting john richards what do you think what is the deal with god and sex and against fornication of all things well, he, he made us all obsessed with sex, and therefore other people's sex is very interesting to us as well. And there's a word for that that I can't remember at the moment. Um, I'm looking it up, see if I can get there. Mariah Carey's got a number called Obsessed. So the thing is that this is such an Im- important factor in a lot of populations' viewpoint right. that there's a country, it's a group of islands, that traits as a country, Indonesia at the moment, that's passing a bill through its parliament which forbids adultery, homosexuality, um, sex outside of marriage. Yep. And, and there's punishments of, of about a year in jail for most of those offences. And I've got no idea how they're going to detect these activities. How are they gonna, yeah, how are they going to police those those crimes eh? yes uh when i hear the the complaints religion has with sex i always think it's a matter of control because i'm going to hijack biology uh something that a lot of people think about or something that it's hard for people to not even think about like don't think about zebras you're thinking about zebras right what if i made thinking about zebras a sin and now every single time you try not to think about zebras even though it's your natural proclivity to do so you will yeah. then realize, oh, I got to go back to my religious authoritarian to ask for forgiveness or to, to ask my God to forgive me because there's something wrong with me. And the saddest thing with religion is that it's basically a poison that's given to kids that they claim they have the cure for, but there is no real cure. The cure is right. getting rid of, stop giving that poison away to your next generation of children. Yeah, I, you, can't, you I, can't cure a disease you don't have. Right. It's so well said. And then not only that, but there's the secondary effect of it, because for the people who aren't obsessed with sex, they have to deal with the fact that there is a powerful group of people who are that dictate labels that are put on people, whether they're good or bad. And if they are good, they have to be good in their certain ways. And if they're bad, Mm -hmm. they're the others. Even if they don't have obsessions with sex, they're wrong. Something's wrong with them. They're not normal. And it mm. starts to bias what normality is, even in, in cultures that are well suited to accept a progressive attitude. And it, mm. it's a really unfortunate thing. I feel like, for one, uh, I don't really have a lot of, I never had a lot of sex obsessed thoughts, but I felt that lacking that was a problem for me. And I, I thought, whoa, I must not be, something's wrong with my head. I, like I must not be normal because everyone else is talking about this thing that I have very little interest in. Is there a problem with me? No. It was a completely normal state of mind to be in. I didn't have, I couldn't realize it until I was like in my thirties. So like, it leads to a lot of problems, this idea of sex. What if we just inverted the problem and we can invert the problem before we get to the bottom of half hour? What's our time, Larry? Real quick. We're at 25, 24 and a half minutes or so. Sweet. We got plenty of time. Let me, let me, here's my inverse. Okay. (laughs) So don't fornicate, 
but also don't commit adultery, lust, and prostitution. If we invert the problem, what if we just said, okay, maybe that first thing helps reduce the other things. Have fun, guys. <laughs> well, let's... Party on. Yeah, is okay, and then you could... Maybe if you yeah. do that first thing, all the other stuff like drops yeah. down dramatically. What do you guys think about that? That's, yeah. well, that's awesome. let, let's not forget that the Bible was written by men yes. who were who were <laughs> yeah. preacher who were preachers, right? And who yeah. felt that they owned the women of their flock, as right. they were. Yeah. You know, and yeah. as long as they put down sex for everybody else, then they can do what they want. Yeah. How many right. times have we heard about uh, preachers? You know, having sex with the, the mm. women in their flock or the boys mm. in their flock or whatever, they put all these uh, these proscriptions out for the people or the men in their flock, and right. then they mm. do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, it's control and hypocrisy, yeah. right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Do as you're told, hypocrisy. not what I do. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a report in uh, um, Maryland recently about, I think it's in excess of six hundred uh, sexual abuse offences committed by clergy and officials of the the, the evangelical church <clears throat> over yeah. the last 90 years so <laughs> nobody is uh, immune no and, yeah. and the saddest thing is is we're not surprised by it anymore like no. catholic mm -hmm. priest uh sexually abuses uh 14 children that won't even make it to the headlines of any news because yeah. yeah. it's yeah. just mm -hmm. oh well that's what happens like Tell yeah. us about the dog that can speak French. Like that's news. I'm like, wait yeah. a second. How's yeah, yeah. It, it's, how's it's it on desensitized. Television? We've been desensitized yes. to it just by frequency. It's the expectation. Yes. Like yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. It would be We're more good. alarming to hear of a priest that never abused anybody. Like record serving <laughs> priest has never abused a single child once. Wow, that's oh, pretty yeah. good. That's on news. Yeah. That <laughs> and, and, but but then they would find that it's because he was a eunuch. Uh, uh, okay yeah. now we're at the bottom of the half Sorry, yeah we should probably break okay. stay tuned for the second half of the digital free thought radio hour on wozo radio 103.9 lpfm here in knoxville tennessee we'll be right back after this short break okay let me get out welcome back to the second half of the digital free thought radio hour i'm dr five and we're on wozo radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year, soon to be our 23rd year coming shortly. And we have over a thousand members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Bartley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables because uh, it's cold <laughs> we also have tuesday evening zoom meetings if you'd like to join us you'll need to email us for details at ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com you can find us online too at facebook meetup.com or go to the website at knoxvilleatheist.org by the way if you don't live in knoxville you can still go to meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town don't find, don't one. find one Star one. Star one. Right. Where do you want to pick up, Wombat? We're going to do some listener comments, uh, and I'd love to get some feedback. Anonymous Mouse says, uh, based on our last episode, stop mentioning Kent Hoven, William Craig, and Frank Turek. It only gives them more power. What do you guys think? That's right. I, and uh, he also, he did mention them in the comment, but I also think like he would necessarily have to. So, yeah. uh, Dredd, what do you think of the idea of stop mentioning those people? I absolutely agree. The more oxygen you give them, the more they stick around. Uh, yes. Starve them out. Give them more CO2. Ignore them, basically, yep. and watch them go away. John yep. Richards, do you have a comment on that? Yeah, because I, I have fun <laughs> looking at them. <laughs> and I don't want to de be deprived of that, you know, because uh, where, where else am I going to get such low-hanging fruit from? Okay. That's true. Okay, yep. okay. Larry Rhodes, do you have a philosophy on mentioning like people who are famous by being annoying over and over and over again? No, I agree with you. I agree with the commenter. Don't mention them. Okay. I try not to, but it's hard not to because uh, they're such good, bad examples. Though you mm. did uh -huh. personally interact with them, John Richards. Like you've actually had conversations mm. and debates with I them. I have. Right? Yes, yes. I'm afraid so. Guilty as charged. Right. Yeah. 
out of politeness it's just instead of that guy you have to say the name i i can respect that jared what do you think well i was going to say that um it's it's probably a good practice to extol the merits of uh non-religious views without having to have that as a counter you know what i mean just mm -hmm. by virtue of its of its own merits mm -hmm. um that these are good ideas uh, but don't have to be measured against bad ideas. Right. Yeah. Well, you see, there you go, because it's all up against temptation, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we also like to personify things. And when we can, so because we personify even ideas, we mm. often see the same ideas presented every single time a new person presents the same yeah. idea. Yeah. Whereas yeah. if we challenge the concept itself, then regardless of whoever champions it the next time, it's still... Yeah the same bad concept and we can exactly, exactly so it's going to be very difficult here in the uk to not mention a couple of those names in the next few months because a a certain um chief executive of answers in genesis hmm. in conjunction with a certain man who likes <laughs> making videos of him holding a banana okay they are oh, no. they, they 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 are forming a team to try and attract Christians from around the world to descend on London in order to present their their propaganda, let's face it, to the crowds that are attending the coronation on May the 6th. Have you heard about this? Yeah. No, this is new information for me. But really? Yes. Well, it, it, they're calling it Operation London. And the the reasoning goes that this is a mega event. This right. is like this is like the Oscars on steroids. Right. Because and you have we a new king. Exactly. We haven't right. had a coronation for 70 years. Yep. Then uh, and the world loves our royals. So everything is going to stop. Everybody's going to be eyeballing Westminster Abbey for the coronation. And that's their opportunity as they see it. Because of course, our king is a fraud. He's only an earthly king. Hmm. The real king is Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. They're trying to get the political timing impression, first impression. Oh. I'd say this too. Um, we have some really good comments from the uh, episode. I was born an atheist and so are you. Miss Bella Close says, I freaking love this guy. Subscribe. Uh, Haley Paget says, I stumbled across this show. You guys have very interesting comments. I'm looking forward to watching more. Thank you, Haley Paget. The cool. Afro Atheist, eight, uh, Esther from the uh, Global Atheist News Review. Also Afro, the, Af the Afro Atheist. The Afro yeah, Atheist yeah. says, yeah, hey, yeah. Ty, I'm waiting for you to still complete the challenge. The challenge being dancing on the show. I've danced on Global Atheist News Review. I've I have completed uh -huh. that challenge, Esther. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Dada's Trading Room, a uh, frequent commenter on the show, said, can you choose your beliefs? He says, uh, you guys, we made a comment about a turkey's expecting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to come. He says, well, we actually have a similar saying in Poland with the turkey, which was expecting Sunday, but it got beheaded on Saturday. The only difference is ours rhymes in Polish. That's pretty good. Uh, uh, <laughs> I have a, I do a, a, a signing on my uh, video as well for Heart of Listening People. And someone asked, can you subtitle your videos, please? Uh, YouTube has a closed captioning feature. I know it's mm -hmm. not perfect, but it'll definitely save me more time than yeah. subtitling hour after hour of the show. Or uh, maybe better technology exists out there. You can use your phone for a lot of subtitling features that are much yeah. more accurate. And and you can actually download the transcript from YouTube. Ah, yeah. oh, perfect. That's even better. We'll make sure to speak only the King's English on this show, just to make sure it can be understood very well. <laughs> the uh, the heavenly king saying. or the earthly king? <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, who's also a member of the show, uh, or a Global Atheist News Review, says on the episode, good people are going to hell. She says, good people go to hell for the offense of not being gullible. And that's sad. Yeah. Very true. Uh, guys. There's so many comments. Thank you so much. But I want to get back to, feel free to leave more. We'll be happy to get through them to next episode. I want to get to more problems that we can invert, which was the topic of today's mm. show. I want mm. to talk about homosexuality is a sin. And we know it's a sin. It's in the Bible. If you don't believe me, go to any uh, protest where they have guys holding the flyers or the posters. They have the citations on the poster. 
that's right. the best depiction. Don't believe your Christian friends who says, well, God just loves everybody and it doesn't matter who you love and all that stuff. It's like, no, it's in the Bible. The guys are holding the citations. You can read it yourself. You don't have to believe me. You can go in your Bible, get those citations and figure it out. What I do love though, and and before I go on a round table of like it's homosexualized sin, we did recently have a federal pass by Joe Biden, famous Catholic, lifelong Catholic, devout believer in God, passed the protection for uh, uh, federal protection for gay marriage, which means whether you're interracial or you're gay, there is no way a state can revoke those rights from you, regardless of whatever uh, uh, issues they have with it. That is federally protected for all people. And I love that. That is a guy who is Catholic, who's making a very non-Catholic decision. That's what I love about it, because he is a political leader for all people. What do you think, Dred? Well, I, I'm, I'm wondering why, if he has the power to do that, mm. why he couldn't at the same time go, uh, I also uh, provide protection for uh, a woman's bodily autonomy. Abortion's next on the list. Why, on the list. Yeah, why can't he just do that? If he can Ooh. do that for protecting gay marriage, why can't right. he just say that that's the way it is federally? Supreme Court would probably take that away, most likely. Well, couldn't they take away the gay marriage thing too? They could. They absolutely oh, could. They absolutely mm. could. But mm. it's one. It's it'd be much harder for them to do that on a yeah. less popular topic than it would be for the abortion, of, yeah. which was yeah. a recently yeah. made decision by our Supreme Court. So it's I like. See. It's like if I brought potatoes and someone's like, I hate those potatoes, and they throw them in the trash, you'd be like, I don't like this guy. But if it was like they threw away a plate of broccoli that I brought like six weeks ago that everyone's like, oh, broccoli's fine. This is like, yeah, the broccoli was spoiled. They may not be as offended. It's a really, really delicate balance right now. It's just like, don't immediately overturn the thing that I just said we can't do. Uh, that'd be terrible. But anyway, John Richards, what do you think? Well, I, I'm not sure that the Bible is a reliable source of information because, of course... Go. Oh, I, although, I disagree. It's amazing. <laughs> well, al it says it's the best one. book in the book. It says we are the best book in the book. We're the good book. It says it in the book. <laughs> yeah, that's some endorsement, that is, isn't it? <laughs> so, of course. Because al although... Stop it, child. I'm being invaded by children here. Yeah. So, because although it's it's quite clearly against against homosexuality, mm. it's very much pro abortion and mm. genocide. Oh yeah, so, absolutely. So what do we take from that? Yeah, you know, I wouldn't even be surprised if it was in a lot of ways. Oh, geez. I keep thinking of like Jesus as depicted in the Bible is a guy who doesn't like handiwork, likes to keep his hands soft loves to hang out with other guys, loves to hang out in, in robes and, and nice little gowns, accessorizes with like red scarves, super long hair, good abs. I'm like, we can connect some dots here is all I'm saying. He loves to party. His major, one of his major things, not like Samson, who's like pushing pillars across from each other or like zapping lightning bolts from the sky, like or God or something like that. It's like, oh, I can make parties even more fun by turning the water into wine so we can have even more drunk. It's like, that is... That is, uh, I don't want to make it stereotypical, but like that is not machismo and action. That is very <laughs> much a guy who loves hanging out with other dudes. And he, there's a lot of he's not a man's that. man. He's and not it a seems man. it's a little telling to be like, well, it's, it's it's not gay though. It's like it kind of is. Just embrace it. It's totally good. We're all fine with that. We're like, I'm, it's not okay. I have a problem with this. Like, well, that's your problem. Don't make it our problem. Right. And, I'm, right. And I'm loving you. I'm loving the American version of machismo. <laughs> is, that <American laughs> is that American cheese in the middle of it? Yes, it is. It's American cheese. It's the best cheese. We all know this. All right. So homosexuality is a sin. What if we inverted it and said, OK, well, if it's a sin, just don't do it if you're straight. Yeah, well, that would cause a, that would solve a lot of the problems. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're straight, I mean, don't be, yeah. don't be, don't be homosexual. But if you're homosexual, that's fine. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. If you're against abortion, don't have abortions. If you're exactly. against abortions, don't have abortions. How about that? All of these things are a matter of personal taste, mm. and there's no reason yeah. to impose your taste on me. Right. right. So right. it's not just because they say it's God and God is the God of all of us, whether you know it or not, which is their right. attitude. And right. we have to obey them whether we are a part of that religion or not. And they're going to make damn sure you do by passing laws. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. You know, it, it, it's like having 89 flavors of ice cream and only being allowed to eat one. Yes. Yes. Vanilla. This, this no, is the vanilla thing is the best way. 
the, this is the thing about the bill going through the Indonesian parliament at the moment, because mm. they're not just saying adultery and uh, sex outside of marriage and all those other naughty things are merely naughty to their population. Mm. If you're a visitor, a tourist there, then you're banned as well from carrying out those naughty things. Mm. Well, yeah. go for that's it. true. That's true. A lot of societies do that, though. Um, look at Qatar. Oh, sure. Um, I mean, the thing with uh, Qatar, right? right. The soccer. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No but, homosexuality, yeah, many, boys. Many, many countries will legalize, I mean, legitimize may turn into law Be their thought. religious beliefs mm. and america's we just want money in that regard yeah mm. i i i tend to find that these rulings on sex and sexual groups or identities come from institutions that are fearful of change because they don't want to have to deal with reordering of power that might come from the fact of change occurring um if i'm if i am profiting off of people by making sure that they stay uh, indoctrinated in their small bubbles and and don't get opportunity to become like engineers or scientists or polo politicians or world travel people. And that's a situation where I want to make sure I come up with as many arbitrary rules to conduct their everyday lives and thoughts as much as possible. And so I think back on like the black community, which is very conservative, unfortunately, like you look at us as a group in America, a lot of us aren't pro uh, gay people or or abortion and stuff like that or even atheists, because we're very much in caught in the religious fold, yet we've had a great Black president who supported all these things by virtue of the fact that he was educated, world-traveled, understood the needs of many different groups of people. Same thing with Biden, same thing with anyone who gets an opportunity to leave their small circle and their small culture and understand that there's meaningful people all around the world that don't necessarily follow the same ideology or could be served by the same dogma. Like, that is the, that is the reason yeah. why I feel like a lot of the religious cornerstones that we have are crumbling apart because we're yeah. becoming much more globally interconnected with each other and realizing yeah, yeah. this model of behavior is not going to be suitable for everyone that yeah, yeah. and critical thinking are going to be the steps that hopefully get us completely out of this era of religion mm -hmm. and in my opinion when we look back on this 50 years from now hopefully we can say oh yeah that was a time when everyone was religious <laughs> and now we have a new reason, a, the age of new reason, where we completely yeah, yeah. left those shackles and are now solely focused mm. on better treatment for human beings, scientific approaches for understanding things, and new adverts and technology and treating people that have been yeah. untouched by ever before. Steven Pinker has a great book. It's called Enlightenment Now. I'd mm. recommend that as a read for anyone that wants to be encouraged by mm. the direction in which uh, societies around the world are going. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I do I think we're trending towards that. I interviewed Stephen Pinker a couple of weeks ago. There's a video of it that will be launched uh, in due course. I had an opportunity cool. to interview three people that night. Lawrence Krauss, Stephen Pinker, and um, Peter Singer. How are so you not a member of the British Empire yet? <laughs> that, was a good, that was a good night for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what you're saying there is that what we need to do is to mm. educate all of these religious people to keep their noses out of our genitalia. Right, right. Amen. Or stop reading. Ramen. Like Ramen. Yeah. <laughs> Why are they so nosy? Why they're, they're sex obsessed, aren't they? That's right. I mean, I don't like it when my dog does it. So you know. <laughs> I want to tackle another one. I don't know how simple this would be, but we have God's laws, right? And we also have our local laws, and we are always told to uphold God's <clears throat> laws above everything else. But we have an impact on our local laws if we're upstanding members of our community, if we can vote, if we can at least show up in boards, if we elect officials who like can help, you know, curve attitudes towards better, more, uh, how, what's the best word for it, beneficial to our community, like make things more beneficial for our communities. Um, but God's law is unchanging. It's perfect. And unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily address everything in the way or in the nuance that it needs to. And so we have a big declaration in the Bible, do not steal. That's a problem. So if you steal, that's a problem. And why is it a problem? Because it goes against God's law. It's one of the big 10. You cannot steal. It's the first thing most Christians will say when you talk about sins. They won't, they'll obfuscate the fact that six of them deal with 
thought crimes of adultery and like sex related stuff and putting God number one, but they'll be like, well, you can't murder and you can't steal. Like those are the only <laughs> two good ones of the 10. Yeah, yeah. Stealing yeah. is a one that they bring up because it's against God's law. But you know what? If we invert the problem, what if we just said it's also against local laws too? And maybe we should like think about the conditions of our local laws. Cause if I steal yeah. something, does that mean I should get my hand cut off? Or does it mean like, oh, maybe I just accidentally walked out with something unknowing and I'll put it back again. Maybe we can have different tiers of stealing and different punitive measures based on the severity of what was stolen and the intent behind it that we can demonstrate in court. Like we yeah. can figure that out ourselves. We don't need <clears throat> God's law. Yeah. Well, the problem with God and his law is he's not local. We can go to our local source of laws and check it out. There's the right. book. There's all the laws. Right. We can't do that for God's laws. God's laws be heavily in quotes, you know, and and they vary according to where you were brought up. Right. Uh, I mean, the laws in Indonesia that I've been speaking about are very different from the laws in the UK. Right. So, and even if you go by the, even if you go by the book, you know, different churches interpret the book different yes. ways. Of course. Right. Yes. Yeah. And but if I'm you not, have the these churches are wanting to have their own police force they would have mm. their own written laws about what they're yeah. allowed to do and not the clergy and yeah. the uh, parishioners and those, yeah. those laws would change from church to church from, right. and from interpretation and from time to time too because we, we noticed how limbo went out for example the previous pope canceled limbo uh -huh. it was it was a oh, place right. where it was a place where the un um Unbapt, unbaptized unchristian un un yeah. babies went yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. which wasn't quite so bad as hell <laughs> but he's yeah, abolished him so yeah, but where did those babies go he did never address that did he yeah no, no so here's the here's the breaking news i've thought of that word that i couldn't find <laughs> okay what was the thought it's no <laughs> it's salacious ah, oh salacious. Yeah. salacious i love it love it's a lovely, That's a lovely word. word. Lovely uh, word. Unnecessarily sexual obsession. Mm. There, right. there is a problem though with God's law. It is, it is very unsatisfactory from a what is the punitive measure, right? Mm. It'll tell you what the edict is. It'll tell you how mm. to exonerate yourself from it, but it doesn't mm. tell you the course of action of what to do if you are guilty of that crime. So mm. don't steal. Okay, and what happens if we do? Well, listen to your local leader or your local authoritarian or your local tyrant who will happily dish out any punitive measures. Like you gave too much control to one person that can be biased on how, whether it's their son who steals something or a complete stranger or a foreign person or the chosen people. Like what are these rules that you set up if you haven't clearly outlined what the punitive measures are? Then you know what the yeah. great thing about local politics and local rules are? Those are explicitly laid out. And so if I am, for example, a guy that does this dance, Esther, check it out. I'm yeah. dancing. I did it. And that can, becomes <laughs> that goes on Fortnite for whatever reason. Fortnite takes that and it turns into an emoji. I can be like, they stole my dance. But then it'll be like, you don't own that movement. You just did a uh, movement. Maybe you inspired it. It's not frame for frame. You can't own <clears throat> songs. They didn't steal it. Oh, okay. So there's no punitive action? No, of course not. This is like, okay. So even if I'm convinced that something was stolen, and even if I can demonstrate that, uh, example of it has been we have case law and and establishment yeah. where it says yeah. actually we have codifications to show that this isn't yeah. as severe as you think it is even if it means personally a lot to you yes. that's so yeah. useful in a biased society in a subjective society we don't have that from the bible no clarity whatsoever mm. just if you do still pray to god jesus and we'll forgive you I'm like mm. how unsatisfactory how do we maintain a society on such a loose set of rules mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so so I like that because it's um, it's channeling, isn't it? I, I didn't steal it. I merely channeled it. <laughs> I was inspired. I was inspired. It's like, yeah. oh, they got my dance. Oh, no. You never yeah. know. That's uh, right. Guys, we're at the, I think we're at the bop. Larry, what do you think? Where are we at? We've got uh, about eight and a half minutes left. We're, oh, we're still pretty that's, good. Oh, that's let's pound it through. Okay. Okay. So we talked about how to resolve it, how to invert these problems and solve them with our current day technology. We can use uh, uh, eye masks to stop people from lusting over people who have uh, issues with uh, hijabs being worn. We have, hey, listen, only be as offended as your God. 
How about that as a good rule? Like that could be a nice general rule. And if we don't see lightning strike hit people who blaspheme God, then you could take it that you don't need to step in on behalf of your God and vicarious to be offended for him. What do you think, Larry? Well, there's a problem with that as usual in the, in the uh, Bible, you know, God theoretically stepped in and gave everybody diseases, right? Correct. Well, the preachers are going to point to COVID. God did step in. See, he gave everybody COVID because you're not listening to what I said. You're not following God's rules. They they just interpret it any way they want to to make it their point. Well, I'm totally the favorite a favorite is the post hoc uh fallacy right right sure but i'm also a big fan of of testing things and correlation is not the same thing as causation if we want to retest exactly. it again and say like okay then let's do it again and if another covid outbreak happens immediately afterwards then we know for a fact let's not base a worldwide decision on an n of one let's not you build can't your- test god <laughs> oh well then let's not follow him at all because we're going to do things that we can test because we're talking about things that we can solve with our own tooling and what we do tool is test and anyone that oh, says yeah. don't test me shoot i can make a thousand gods that are like don't test me by the way <laughs> yeah. we, we we could actually get a test group together right yeah yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and and under control conditions have them blast beam yes and yes. after you know see if there's a direct um you know a direct punishment uh, right. exacted from on high and yeah. if nothing happens then that is uh, further proof that uh, you know it's not a blaspheme at all yeah it's and how telling is it lies hate to be tested lies will tell you don't look at me under the covers don't ask how this trick was done don't right. try to spoil the illusion whereas don't truth, look behind the curtain exactly <laughs> whereas the truth is always asking you to verify it and always asking to provide proofs for it and yeah. always asking you to look at it critically and try to get closer and closer to the truth with each attempt any right. being that says don't test me is a being that's hiding something. And if we live in a world uh-huh. where a devil exists that is all about tricking and tempting people, you have to yes. consider that a God that says don't test me may not necessarily be in your interest. Right. Yeah. The truth has nothing to hide from investigation. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, what's the point of lawsuits? Like, what? Don't test me. What other yeah. standard of evidence do we apply that to? Oh, there was a murder. Yeah. But don't test it. Just, just yeah. punish yeah. this guy. Don't test yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I love pill, that. Uh, you're sick, but don't test I it. I love the the quote from H.P. Uh, Lovecraft says, uh, "Instead of trying to rip browbeat the gospels into your children, why not? If gospels are true, just tell them to have an unswerving uh, yeah. devotion to looking into looking into the truth and trying to yeah, find yeah. truth. Yeah. Right. Then they so will watch, discover it if it's true." Watch this, guys. Look, God, you're evil, and if you <laughs> exist, destroy me now. <laughs> he, he turned into a green screen that was good that great. was awesome yeah i also say this too um uh, uh devout islamists who have a problem with seeing hair that's uncovered on women we have a supernatural potential to solve that problem god could if he god solved seeing islamic hair uh to to and that immediate okay so if the problem to see women's hair uncovered and god made it so that one day magically any guy who sees an unhaired or oh, it's about to see the uncovered hair of a woman automatically has their eyes engorged shut their eyelids engorged shut like that would be one one indication of oh maybe their 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 god is actually doing something and two that's something we can test. Three, maybe we shouldn't be atheists anymore. Doesn't necessarily mean we'll worship, but at least we know it's this God compared to all the other ones. Because as soon as someone converts to Islam and they try to look at a woman's hair that's uncovered, their eyes shut and they can't stop it. And we can mm-hmm. test that and yeah. look at all the nerves and be like, yeah. oh, this is yeah. very bizarre. Yeah. What's going on it's, here? It's, it's like a new organ in the body suddenly appears <laughs> to make that connection, right? Right. Yeah. I just yeah, need yeah. one supernatural demonstration. What do you think, Larry? Yeah, well, no, I think it would be great. Something testable would be awesome. Right, um, but we're getting close to the top of the hour. We need to start winding out. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, in a simpler context, you could just have someone magically not be able to blaspheme. So whatever John Richards just did, which we don't endorse on this show because we're all God fearing people, <laughs> wouldn't have been feasible. You could have given us lobster hands instead of telling us not to fornicate. Uh, you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, oh, you that, that, made, would, 
That might work against masturbation, but I'm not sure anywhere. That's, against the, how, that's the whole point. That's the whole point. Give us lots of hands. Now we can't uh-huh. it anymore. Uh, homosexuality. Stop making straight people make homosexuals. Don't steal. Create a society where people won't have to or need to steal in the first place. These are all supernatural steps you could have made, which would immediately yep. solve your atheist problem and help us all discover that we all have souls and we're all going yep. to heaven when we die. Isn't that right, Larry? absolutely if he <laughs> just right. show up i mean that's within his power right he just shows show up. up just show, just up. show up yeah, yeah. own it not only own not it, only man. get rid of yeah the atheist problem but all the other religion problems all right mm-hmm. guys mm-hmm. feel free to leave more comments on let's chat this has been a great show dread pirate where can we find your stuff at hey well i'm on mind pirate to uh, m-i-n-d-p-y-r-a-t-e on youtube and uh i do live stream on sunday mornings this show at 7 a.m uh, pst and uh when i do the global atheist news review that's at 11 a.m pst on sunday morning so yeah check me out nice and i hope you're going to john do that today john richards we're working yeah, yeah. With that. well i'm on the free thought channel and my co-host tercia and i had a wonderful conversation with a, a very highly qualified fellow who he's got about four degrees one of which is uh, an md and he, he's an evolution advocate. Okay. And you should watch it. It's a fantastic show. Cool. Who is it? Okay. His name is John Peters. Hmm. He, actually, he's not that far from you, Dred, because he's in uh, Port, uh, Port- uh, Yeah, that one. Where? You know, I'm trying to say Port Coquitlam. Down a Western bit. Canada, Machismo, no, just Northern America on the West Coast. Okay, where where uh, Starbucks comes from? Oh, okay. Portland, Portland, or Seattle. There it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, gotcha. Chapter five, take us out. Okay, this has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Uh, my content can be found at the digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button. Thank you, Dred, for holding my book up. <laughs> um, my book can be found at uh, Amazon, by the way, and it's called a- Atheism, What's It All About? I do have a YouTube channel as well at, at Doubter5. Check it out. Remember, everybody's going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real, and they haven't for a long time. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, Bye, everybody.